Donald Trump's own criminal defense lawyer personally warned the embattled president that he could wind up in prison wearing an orange jumpsuit. This is not normal. This is a first. So let me repeat the news that is actually rocking Washington right now, even amidst a lot of other news regarding, of course, the Supreme Court confirmation hearings and a new senator named to replace John McCain. But the big news here is Donald Trump's former criminal lawyer, John Dowd, who publicly split with the president over their strategy, warning Donald Trump that he could end up in prison and concluding that Trump was lying in their own preparations for a potential Mueller interview. This obviously raises a ton of questions right now, like why lie to your own lawyer in secret prep sessions about Russia and obstruction? And what else did Donald Trump's lawyer see that brought him to such a stark and disturbing conclusion? And what on earth do Mr. Dowd and the White House have to say about all of this right now, this evening? Well, we have some of the answers for you. Now, this report is not from a single article or a few blind quotes. It is a big deal precisely because it's from the Washington Post journalist known for helping bring down another president, Bob Woodward, who famously reported Watergate and says for this book, he conducted hundreds of interviews. Today, he even released separately audio of his own personal phone call with Trump. Now, the book features Trump's aides hiding papers from the president, insulting his intelligence, and Donald Trump stewing over the Russia probe. All of this detailed piecemeal in a release through a Washington Post article. And it reports for the very first time that Donald Trump's criminal defense team tried to prep him for a potential Mueller interview. And they were holding these prep sessions through a practice interview, a sort of a a draft Mueller interview back in January, and that's where Trump lawyer John Dowd, quote, peppered Trump with questions provoking stumbles, contradictions, and lies until the president eventually lost his cool, which led to an estimated 30-minute rant by Trump ending with this important admission. Trump basically secretly telling his own lawyers, quote, I don't really want to testify before Mueller. That, of course, contradicts Donald Trump's public claims that he does want to testify. And then there's this, Woodward reporting that Dowd then would tell Mueller about that very practice session, even reenacting part of it in a kind of an effort to show on their part that Trump was somehow his own worst enemy and it didn't make sense for Dowd to let the president talk to Mueller. Here's that passage, quote, I'm not going to sit there and let him look like an idiot, Dowd reportedly told Mueller, and you published that transcript because everything leaks in Washington and the guys overseas are going to say, I told you he was an idiot, I told you he was a dumbbell, what are we dealing with this idiot for? Mueller reportedly replying, I understand. Now that is a rare peek inside the highest levels of negotiations in the Mueller probe, the meetings that Bob Mueller attends personally. And Bob Woodward, let's be clear tonight, he is staking his reputation on getting these reported details right. Now Dowd and the White House are strongly denying these reports, and we'll get into that. Let's get into the prison warning, though, because Woodward reports that by March, Dowd was trying to find any way to get through to Donald Trump about what he saw through his legal judgment as very real risks of criminal exposure. And yes, even a president can face legal risks. So he reportedly urged Trump, quote, don't testify. It's either that or an orange jumpsuit. Trump reportedly responding, I'll be a real good witness. And Dowd responded to that, quote, you're not a good witness, Mr. President. I'm afraid I just can't help you. Now, Dowd may deny the words in this account, but it's an undisputed fact that he then left the White House the next day. Now, Trump's aides say this entire book consists of, quote, fabricated stories. But let's be clear as we get into the ramifications of this very, very big report. The fake news card is not going to cut a lot of ice against Bob Woodward, who's reported on presidents from both parties his whole career. In fact, today, journalists and politicos in both parties have been marveling at Woodward's reporting and backing up his factual reputation. Former Bush spokesman Ari Fleischer, who's tangled with Woodward, said today Woodward is, quote, straight and never makes up quotes. Fox News is Brit Hume treating the book as true and noting it depicts a, quote, chaos and dysfunctional White House. Now, Woodward is already releasing his own receipts, showing his high-level contact with Trump aides in his effort to interview the president, which Donald Trump declined, though they did have a long phone call about that afterward, where Woodward reiterated his reporting is from first-hand sources. And I think there's nothing in this book that doesn't come from a first-hand source. Is that correct, I, Evelyn? I believe but are you naming names, or do you just say sources? Yeah, well, it, it names real incidents, so... No, but do you, do you name sources? I mean, are you naming the people, or just say, uh, you know, people have said? I, 
I, I say at 2 o'clock on this day, the following happened, and everyone who's there, including yourself, uh, it is quoted. And I'm sorry I didn't get to ask you about these. Now, finally, perhaps no insidery Trump account would be complete without some baby talk. The president is notoriously prickly about being called or considered a baby, but he does project that insecurity by using the attack on others. And according to a copy of this book reviewed by CNN, Trump called Rudy Giuliani a baby during the 2016 campaign. This was around the time Giuliani was trying to defend Trump in the Access Hollywood tape fiasco. Here's the quote, Rudy, you're a baby. I've never seen a worse defense of me in my life. They took your diaper off right there. You're like a little baby that needed to be changed. When, the president asks Rudy Giuliani, are you going to be a man? I am joined for our special Washington edition by George Will, a conservative columnist for The Washington Post, and Tatra Bertrand, who's covered this presidency and the Russia case for The Atlantic, and former federal prosecutor John Flannery, all at the table. John, I begin with you. Before we get to uh, what George and I call the baby talk, let's huh. begin uh, with the prosecutor talk. What do you see as legally significant in this account? Well, there are a couple of things that seem to me significant. The, the failure of the defense attorneys of the president uh, going to Mueller and saying, our client is a liar and we can't have him testify and he can't take the fifth. The flip side of that meeting that's impressive to me is the statement by Mueller saying, I want to know his intent on the firing of Comey. Mm -hmm. And that, that fits into everything we've heard from the beginning until now about the corrupt conduct of Mr. Trump trying to obstruct the investigation in the hydra-headed ways that he has on but the Hill. does it also go to a rare peak of how Mueller operates, that yes. if Bob Mueller was convinced, based on facts, that this was a normal firing with normal, legitimate intent, then he would be okay with it? I think that uh, Mueller is the kind of man, I knew him from on the Hill, not in a criminal matter, but a matter out in California when he was the U.S. attorney there. And he's a by-the-book guy, by-the-facts, and uh, I don't think you could find a bias in the man except to get to the truth. And I think that's how he operates. But I do think he's had a lot of things that have disturbed him, and he wouldn't tell a defense attorney, I'm concerned about the intent of the president when he fired Comey. And, uh, and I think that that is pivotal and it, it drives him toward everything else because if the president is firing Comey to kill the investigation, then it's consciousness of guilt. He has to be doing it for a reason, and that is that there was a conspiracy, not a collusion. There was a conspiracy in the campaign to use material that he knew was stolen, that was uh, itself a violation of the criminal law in, ex in exchange for what? to help a foreign nation with sanctions that were rightly justified and to remove them as part of his deal and whoever, whatever else there is. And, and, and this is the, you know, only what we've seen publicly. We've seen from the first two indictments that talked about how they set up the uh, Russian involvement, the, 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 uh, the, all the publicity that would help Trump. And the third indictment, if it comes and anytime soon, I think it'll be the conspiracy, the underlying conspiracy. But I, this is a very disturbing statement that we have a president that um, can't tell the truth, and his lawyer tells him he can't tell the truth, and he's caught in this impossible Shakespearean dilemma of how do I preserve myself as a president who has to speak without compromising my ability to avoid this investigation. And he's answered it. He's going to destroy the investigation. He's not going to do it in the midterms. He's going to do it when the midterms are over. There are not uh, many people who sit at these tables or go down to the, the building behind me and have the experience of Bob Woodward. Uh, I think it's fair to say, George Will, you do, uh, having covered and written about so many presidents uh, and thought through what it means when a White House is if one believes Bob Woodward's reporting, leaking like this, and almost a cry for help. Uh, give us the context as you see these new, these new reports. Well, uh, Bob's challenge, and I think he's probably met it, is to tell us something we didn't already know, because Mr. Trump is himself an open book who's been reading himself to the country for 30-some years now. What I think is most interesting is that Mr. Trump said, were there names associated with these quotes? You don't have to be a real veteran Washingtonian to read between the lines. For example, 
when Lindsey Graham tells Bob Woodward about a quote of Obama uh, or, or Trump insulting Obama, we can pretty much assume he got it from Lindsey Graham. So another friendship out. Uh, it's not to me what, uh, what uh, Mr. Trump's employees say about him. We know they've insulted him repeatedly. It's what he says about his employees. When he says to Ross, Secretary of Commerce, who's in charge of all these trade negotiations, you're awful, you're past your past prime. Your prime. And when he says to Sessions that he's retarded and a dumb Southerner, I'm married to a Southerner. They take that stuff seriously, and that's his base down there. Right, and, and you're using that language. You're quoting the president's language. Correct. Uh, so it, 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 it seems to me that when you have a White House that is so full of Hobbes' state of nature, mm -hmm. where life is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short, when no one trusts anyone. There's no loyalty. Beyond loyalty, there's no affection. Hmm. And to have a White House full of these people who are walking on eggshells, tiptoeing through a minefield, pick your metaphor, uh, it, it's, it's a place where no one can fall back on anything. No one can relax. And to imagine what it's like in that atmosphere, well, it's hard to imagine. Well, and that comes with the test of this investigation, but not a true foreign policy crisis, not a real decision point where you say, how does that environment, this president, deal with something where there could be massive repercussions on the line? That's why the presidency is different than just about every other job in this town. Uh, I count Shakespeare and Hobbes. I'm very interested to see what literary reference you have, Natasha. But let me play for you while you gather your thoughts. Uh, John Dowd, someone you've reported on and spoken with a lot, uh, his gloss and all this, this is, of course, a clip from before these bombshell reports came out. Take a look. Do you believe the president will eventually sit down with Bob Mueller based on your experience with him wanting to engage with counsel? Well, it's, there's, no, there's no reason for the president to answer questions from Mueller. Mueller has all the answers. We gave him all the answers. Mueller has all the answers from the myriad of witnesses that he's been interviewing around the president. I mean, just look at the list. It's George Papadopoulos, Michael Flynn, Don McGahn, um, Paul, Paul Manafort, Rick Gates. I mean, I think that this is really the root of the fear that they have in allowing the president to sit down with Mueller. It's not just because he has a loose relationship with the truth, to put it generously, but it's also just because there are so many there are so many things that he's probably going to contradict about other people's testimonies that they've already told um, the special counsel. But I think that one of the most telling things about this book is the fact that Trump was not only, he was lying to his lawyers. I mean, why would you lie to your own lawyers if you really feel like you don't have anything to hide? And part of Trump's MO for the last couple decades of being in the real estate business is he's always thought that he's been able to talk his way out of anything, that he can just get into a room, he can negotiate with someone, he can convince them that he's done nothing wrong and that he himself is the victim. And I think that is also part of what's fueling this kind of paranoia in the White House is that people are generally afraid that Trump is going to throw them under the bus because he's done it so much in the past. In depositions, for example, we've seen that he's blamed other people for things that he himself is being accused of. So it's almost like you're seeing people trying to get out ahead of this. Mm. Um, and, you know, just based on one that exchange that he had with Rudy Giuliani, for example, calling him a baby, even when Rudy Giuliani was virtually the only one defending him during that weekend that the Access Hollywood tape dropped, it just shows that loyalty is really a one-way street for the president. Well, I can tell you uh, it's an unfair and inaccurate attack because babies can't do television interviews. <laughs> uh, I, we've never had a baby on this show because they don't speak, John. Yes. And if they don't speak, they're, they're not good for interviews. But, but, what about the question Natasha raises? Such an intriguing question. I saw you vigorously nodding your head, as you are known to do on this set from time to time. <laughs> yeah. Natasha raised an, an intelligent and interesting question. Why would you lie to your own lawyer? I wonder if we put that question to you. I, I think he resents the dependence. The same, the same thing goes on with the baby thing and then he goes off and he gives his intent he goes off and he says uh, in an interview uh, that uh, yes I fired him because uh, of the investigation I wanted to kill him. he makes the he gives his intent in a public proceeding under tape
And uh, you might ask why, and the, the comparison to Shakespeare. Shakespeare has this quote, guilt spills itself for fear of being spilt. He can't keep it to himself. He has to say it. He knows everybody knows it, or he fears he does. We talked about the paranoia in this book that he exhibits, and he talks about they're out to get me and so forth, and he helps them get him. He, he wants to, it's the, sort of the thing he wants to be caught, and he has been caught in a way. The polls are indicating the nation doesn't buy his stories anymore more and they know he's lying he, he's in a very dangerous place and as a kid you know you'd see these movies with the walls and the ceilings and everything coming in well he perceives that whether or not it's true and it's becoming true because he and believes I'm, it I'm only gonna interrupt you because as is the case around here we have more breaking news the New York Times is reporting I'm being told at this moment uh, that Bob Mueller's lawyers are uh, basically open to some written answers from Donald Trump. This is crossing the wire right now. They're calling it a, quote, interim measure, and this reporting appears, I want to caution, appears to be based on characterizations, not from Mueller's folks who aren't confirming it uh, on the record, uh, but from a characterization from the Trump White House. Again, I'm going to read from the New York Times here uh, for your response. Sure. Uh, it says, essentially, the special counsel will accept written answers from President Trump on questions about whether his campaign conspired on Russian election interference. This says Mr. Mr. Miller's office told Trump's lawyers in a letter, according to, quote, two people briefed on it. They don't identify the sources, but later it says they have dangled written answers as a possibility. Mr. Miller's team, quote, appears receptive to this as an interim measure. That would be Russia conspiracy, not obstruction, and it might not forestall an ultimate subpoena, which we saw in the star clinton matter. Your reaction? My reaction is that's terrific, because these will be focused questions. And when he answers, it's as, it's as true or false a statement, whether he was saying it orally or it's written down. A hundred lawyers can sit there and write this thing, but if they fail to answer the question, there'll be a follow-up, just like there would be in a true interview. So there's going to be a statement, and they can't get away from it. Right. And and I, George, your view of this story? Well, it's a, way, it's, a, it's a meaningful attempt on the part of Mueller, it seems to me, to meet him more than halfway. Right. But, question, why is he lying? He lies to everybody, first of all. He said, why does he lie? Yeah, because that's what he does. Fish got to swim, birds got to fly, he has to lie. And it's, do you think it's in his nature? I do, I do of course I do. Uh, but uh, there's also the problem of what a tangled web we weave when first we <laughs> practice to deceive, because you know, you've all told our children, tell the truth, it's easier to remember than all the lies that can be told, and I think that's part of the problem that Mr. Trump is in now. He's got so many versions out there of what he did and why he did it that it must be hard to keep track of. Exactly. Uh Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.